I'm uh, in extreme close-up because I'm holding the camera at arm's length. I'm here with Shell Holtz from Concord, California and uh, co-host of the Four Immediate Release podcast and the writer of a brilliant blog. Shell gave a workshop yesterday on social media and some of the, the new stuff that's coming along, some of the trends that business communicators need to be aware of and some of the tools that are able to be used. One particular thing, that, uh, element that caught my, uh, caught my attention was the, the idea of content curation. Um, and Shell's going to be outlining more about content curation through his blog in the uh, the next few months. But um, i turn this back around to Shell. Shell, content curation. Oh, where are we? There we go. So, uh, oh, that's close. Let me see if I can zoom back out. Oh, that's a bit better. Zoom back out. Um, Shell, content curation. Why is it so important now for, for business communicators to be across cost content curation? Well, the situation that we exist in today is one in which a lot of content is being created in a lot of different places. Uh, International Data Corporation estimates that the volume of material that will be published to the web this year alone, 2011, if burned to DVDs and stacked one on top of another, would reach from halfway from here to Mars. Uh, that's a lot of content, yes. and we rely on search engines like Google uh, to filter through that content to find what we're looking for. That is becoming increasingly challenging, uh, regardless of the efficiency of the algorithms of, of, of the search engines. There's still a ton of content to sift through in order to find the material that satisfies your interests meets your needs and even helps you discover things that you may not have known you were looking for. Mm. So what we are turning to is the concept of a trusted guide. Uh, somebody who is able to do that filtering for you based on their subject matter expertise, uh, their experience and the perspective that they're able to bring to their curation efforts. Just as a collection curator in a museum selects the right art uh, and documents it appropriately and displays it in meaningful ways. Mm -hmm. uh, a content curator selects the right content, documents it the right way, provides the right context, and uh, presents it to you so that you can go to this one source and be reasonably confident that you're getting most of the good stuff that you need in order to stay current uh, and informed on that particular topic. Clay Shirky um, has this wonderful line uh, that I cite frequently. He said, the problem isn't um, information overload, it's filter failure. Mm. Uh, and filtering uh, mechanically is, is getting less and less effective. We have to rely on these trusted guides to do that for us. Mm. So then the role of a, of a trusted guide, is that just a, the role for the individual consultant or can organizations be trusted? Can they be trusted to be trusted guides? Well, they earn the trust over time by presenting material that doesn't skew information or perspective one way or another. Uh, but well, certainly organizations can be trusted guides. IBM maintains a, a, a curation resource around their Smarter Planet initiative. Mm. Uh, if you haven't heard of this, uh, it's Let's Build a Smarter Planet. And it's the technologies uh, that they are developing that make things more efficient, that use less electricity or use less water or, or make better use of our resources and data. Uh, and whenever they find a blog post or a video or an article that supports the idea of building a smarter planet in a manner that is consistent with this theme, they simply add it to this curation resource. Mm. And interestingly, they're just using a Tumblr blog okay. uh, to do this. So it's just the most recent thing they find is at the top, whether it's a video or an article. Sometimes it will relate to an IBM initiative, mostly not. Mostly it's just other types of initiatives that are uh, right in line with the goals of, of their Smarter Planet initiative. And that's just one example of a, of a corporation that is curating content. So, uh, with, with, with content curation then, you've got the, the various different places, Storify, Tumblr, all these different places. That means, is, or is there a way that you can take all of these different curation websites and pull them back onto your main corporate website so that you're not you know you, you're keeping attention back on the corporate website rather than having it drift off to various other yeah. other places on the web yeah in fact most of them allow you to do that among the free ones uh, the only one that I know that allows you to do that is storify uh, that allows you to use the embed code 
to put your curated work on your website. And that's what I have uh, on the resources page on my website is four or five Storify stories that are embedded so they look like they're part of my site. Right. Uh, I go over to the Storify site in order to manage that curation effort. But the paid curation services, generally what they give you is uh, a portal. Uh, that can be skinned to look like it's part of your website. Okay. So, for example, Purina maintains a curated uh, page where they pull in the best, most recent, most interesting, fun information about pets. Uh, these could be blog posts that have to do with advances in veterinary medicine, but it could also be the cutest video you've ever seen of a, of a puppy rolling around on the floor. Mm. Uh, and it looks like a, a Purina page, and you get to it uh, from a link on the Purina page and the link that you go to is a redirect that looks like it's part of the Purina site, yes. but they're actually using this fee-based hosted curation service to maintain that site. What's, what's the risk then for an organization if it doesn't start moving down the content curation path? Well, the risk is that people who are looking for good information who increasingly recognize that curated resources are an outstanding way to get what they need will turn to competitors who are doing it instead of you. Mm, mm, mm. So in other words, if you're not seen, you become invisible. Right, exactly. Uh, if, if you're not visible doing this, you don't exist. People yes. will shift their attention to a, a trusted source. Your, your competitor is likely to become the trusted source for that kind of content. Yeah, so if you want to maintain competitive advantage, as we've we've laughed about before, if you want to maintain competitive advantage, do this before everyone else is doing it. Oh, without any question, because when everybody else is doing it, the noise level is higher and you have to mm. do it better than everybody else in order to lure people away from the sources that they've already glommed on to, sure. uh, to pay attention to yours. Yeah. Shell, thank you so much uh, for that and um, hopefully my, uh, my readers uh, and my viewers will derive some great benefit from that and actually go out and start curating themselves, which is something that I'm going to do because I, I got a Storify account and I didn't do anything with it, which is my fault. Get started. Get started. Thanks very much, Shell. Thank you.